This is review for the quiz you've got coming up. I just wanted to go over a couple more things to make sure that we're on the straight and narrow in terms of waves. Um, firstly, waves are arithmetical disturbance through matter or space that transfer energy, right? So anytime you've got something that, that uh, either compresses or extends or you've got some kind of rhythmical disturbance that transmits energy, um, you've got some waves, right? So this is a wave, and this is a wave, and the lights are a wave, and the sound from my mouth is a wave. Waves are all over the place, and they all transfer energy. And there's a couple of different aspects we can use to measure how much energy they actually transfer. The first couple of things that you need to know are um, the crest of the wave is the highest energy that we have, um, the highest point on the wave. The trough is the lowest point. So if you imagine that this is an ocean wave, this is the highest point of the wave, this is the lowest point of the wave. Um, we've got a wavelength, which is the difference in space between any two similar points in the wave. For example, the two highest points, the two lowest points, two points from the midpoint, those are all dictating um, wavelength. La um, we've got amplitude, which is the height of the wave, and this actually is what carries the energy of each individual wave. The bigger the amplitude for the wave, the more energy that particular wave will carry. There are other ways we can increase energy as well. Um, we can fit more waves in a space over a given time, right? So I can transfer some energy by hitting the board really hard, right? That's a lot of energy. That would be a big amplitude. Um, I could also transfer energy by hitting the board um, a lot. Right? If I hit it a lot, that's transferring a lot of energy too. So we call that the, the frequency in which a wave hits something or passes through a given point. Um, we call you know, frequency, right? As frequently as it can. And we measure that in hertz. So there are a couple of ways you can increase the energy of a wave. You can increase the amplitude. You can increase the frequency. And in order to increase the frequency, if we want to fit more of these waves in a given space, um, we actually have to shrink them down. So if we increase frequency, we'll decrease wavelength. Right? That ends up being pretty important. Um, you should also be familiar with this equation. The speed of the wave, though a lot of times we'll say that um, something like light and sound, those all have constant speeds, but something like an ocean wave or a guitar string, these things all um, these things can have different speeds based on a couple of different factors. Um, but the speed of the wave can be dictated by the frequency at which it passes a point and the wavelength, right? So if you've got something really long passing by something really fast, that means that your waves must be moving really or if you've got something really small, it's easier for it, it doesn't need as high a frequency to be moving just as fast, right? That's why we've got this, in, this uh, balance, this inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency, right? Um, and there are a couple of different kinds of waves we've talked about. We've talked about mechanical waves. We've talked about electromagnetic waves. Mechanical waves are waves that need some physical material to Things like sound waves or ocean waves or slinky that you saw, those are all examples of mechanical waves. Um, electromagnetic waves, light waves, they don't need anything to move through. They actually can move through the void of space, which is pretty remarkable in its own right. But um, mechanical waves need mechanical waves need matter. Electromagnetic waves, no matter needed. Um, the density of the material that that wave moves through is actually, in the, it increases the speed of the wave. So for example, you hear a train coming, you can hear it on the train track if you put your ear against it before you can hear it coming through the air because those vibrations can move so much more quickly through a more dense material. Um, electromagnetic waves are the opposite. You have something thick, it takes longer for them to move through. You have something more dense like water or plastic or glass. That actually changes the speed of those things. And we'll talk about why that's important a little bit later. Um, the last bit that you need to know is about the electromagnetic spectrum. Here I've drawn a circle around all of these different waves, right? Um, the small waves, the really high frequency, small wavelength waves are called gamma waves uh, or gamma radiation. They have the most energy. Then x-rays, then ultraviolet, then actually the visible spectrum 
is decently energetic. Infrared is pretty low energy. Microwaves, strangely, I know that we think of them as cooking food, but it's really the amplitude of those microwaves that cooks our food. Um, this is actually decently low energy. And lastly, radio waves, which hardly hold any energy at all. Right, so little energy that we can almost, um, it crackles and pops when we try to listen to it through a radio. Um, anything else? Do you need, no, I don't think so. I think that if you understand that everything that's on this board, you should do pretty well on this quiz. Good luck.